If there's one major downside of email, it is that you do not know if your recipient has seen or at least opened your email. Once you send an email to someone, you have literally no idea if they actually opened it and read it until they actually reply to you. But that is just how email works. It works different than other messaging services. So in this video, we'll see if we can actually know when someone opens your email on their end. Yes, we're gonna do some little hacks to achieve this and I thought it's interesting enough to make a video on it. So here's the thing you might not know about email. You can also send HTML content in your email if your email service supports it. For instance, we'll be using Gmail, which is like the largest email provider as we know it, and it actually supports HTML rendering. You can write some HTML and you can send this HTML in an email. And when it is opened by your receiver on their Gmail inbox, it gets rendered as a HTML web page. Cool, but why is this important? Well, here's the thing. You can basically write your own HTML, which means you can customize your email with different HTML tags and styles, but you can also embed images from a URL. And when your recipient opens the email, the image must be loaded from its source URL, which means a HTTP GET request will be sent to this particular URL when your email is opened by the receiver. That right there is when you know that your email is opened. You get a HTTP request for this image. It means that your email is opened for the first time by the person to whom you send the email. All right, let's actually practically see if it works. First, I'm opening Gmail and I write some HTML and send it to one of my other email addresses. Okay, so that is not exactly what I wanted. You can see that it actually did not get rendered as HTML content. It is just the way I typed it and that's not what I wanted. So here's the thing, there is no HTML editor inside Gmail app itself, but it can still support HTML rendering and here's how. So first I create a HTML file called email.html. You can use any text editor to create the file, I'll be using brackets. And here I write some HTML using some basic tags. I'm not embedding any images yet, Let's just see if the HTML rendering works first. So I open this created HTML file in the browser and voila, it is perfectly rendered by the browser as expected. Now I just copy this whole web page by holding Control A and then Control S and then I paste this thing in my Gmail compose box. Now that is what I wanted. You can see that the email is actually rendered as HTML. So I send this email and yes, the email is properly rendered on the receiver's end as well. All the HTML tags and styles are the way I have written in the HTML. So we can confirm that it actually works. We could write our own HTML and send it as an email. All right, now let's embed that image that we are talking about, the image that we actually need in order to know whenever the receiver opens our email. So I have a sample image that I'll be using of this cute, cute puppy. And first of all, I need to host it on the internet so that people can actually request this image. So I'll spawn up a HTTP server in Python that serves this image file. And then I'll make use of ngrock, which is basically a tool using which you can tunnel your local host to the internet. You see, when I spawned up the Python HTTP server, this is actually only local to my home network. So no one outside my network can access it. And that's an issue. We want this image to be accessible over the internet so that we can capture the requests. So I make use of ngrog to tunnel my local host where my HTTP server is running and I can make it accessible to basically all of the internet using ngrog's servers. It's a very handy tool, I tell you. So I'm now given with this ngrock URL. And if I go to this URL slash the name of the image file, which is puppy.jpg, I will be able to actually access the image that I'm hosting locally. So problem solved. And one more thing, if I come back to my terminal where my HTTP server is running, you can see that it also shows me all the requests that it received. So this is how I will know if I received any request for that image. It will be displayed here with the exact time when that request is received. Okay, so now I edit the HTML file by embedding this image using an image tag, obviously. And I set the SRC attribute of this image tag to the ngrock URL of the image that I'm hosting. I open it in my browser, Control A, Control S to copy it, and then I paste it in my Gmail compose box. 
Okay, let's see the time. It's 9.48 p.m. Keep that in your mind. Now I'm going to open the email on my receiver account and there you go. The email is displayed along with the embedded image. So that means the receiver has sent the request for that image. So let's check back the terminal and you can see that there are multiple requests that were received for that image. Now we can ignore the first three requests because these are the ones from when I actually opened the image URL in my browser. And in the remaining three requests, the first three requests are when I pasted the HTML content in the compose box. So we can ignore these two as well. However, the last request is when I actually opened the email as the receiver. You can see that the time it says is 9.48 p.m. which exactly matches the time when I actually opened the email. That means experiment success. But one thing, I do not actually want to embed a noticeable image for every email I write. And fortunately, there is a workaround for this as well. So if you just Google one pixel image, you will get a PNG image that has one into one resolution. In other words, the image itself is just one pixel, which is not really visible to the naked eye. So it serves our purpose very well. So I'll just download this and replace the puppy image with this one pixel image. If I now open the web page, you can see that there is no noticeable image this time, but the image is still there. It is just one pixel and hence not visible. So now our email doesn't seem like it has any unnecessary image embeds but we still can know whenever the receiver opened the email along with the exact time when it is opened awesome isn't it